I'm joined in studio uh, by two guys who I will allow to introduce themselves because uh, probably they are living the American dream or are chasing the American dream. And I'll start with you, Tyler. Uh, my name is uh, Tyler Ongwai. Um, I grew up in Eldoret and I play basketball in Italy. Yeah. All right. um, I'm Tom Bush Wamukoda. I played in uh, Wichita State at Wichita State University in the United States and I'm going to play pro in Turkey. That's my next move. Wow. Um, we'll start with the American dream first because I'm sure that's where you guys uh, launched your international careers, so to say. Yeah. Uh, so. How was that journey? How were you discovered uh, from Eldoret all the way to the United States? Uh, first of all, I went to high school in French school, Kamsinga, and uh, we had a pretty good uh, basketball team. Mm -hmm. So in that process, uh, one of the coaches called Tony Molding saw me play. So he hooked me up with a college in the United States, uh, University of Louisiana Monroe. Uh, so I went there, uh, played my career there for two years, finished my college, and I had a pretty good career over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what was the exposure like there? Uh, did you get plenty of playing time? And yeah, I was uh, when I went to ULM, I was kind of one of the main guys in the team. Uh, the, the school was doing badly, so but our recruiting class, we were able to leave the school until we started winning a lot of games. So as I played a lot, I almost played like 35 minutes a game, so it was a pretty good experience. All right, uh, yeah. so just before we see where you move to next from mm -hmm. the United States, l let's listen to your story, Bush. And uh, of course, from Kenya, H how did you leave Kenya and excel? Um, so my mom lives in the States and my dad lives over here. He's uh, Dan Wanyama. Uh, so um, the, um, the college where my, my mom used to work, uh, uh, the basketball coach seen my, saw my picture and he asked, he asked my mom, do you know who, who's this tall kid you, you got in your picture? And that was like, that's my son. So he, he told my mom, if, if you can get him to the States, then I'm gonna give him a full basketball scholarship. So I was at Maseno at that point. Uh, I went to high school in Maseno. Then after Maseno, I, did, um, I was planning on going to college, so I was going to go to Strathmore. But when that opportunity came knocking, I, I said, I'm going to go chase the American dream too. Wow. So, and off it's of a picture. And it's amazing. From a picture. Yeah. That's how your story. Uh, wow. That's, that's really amazing. And <laughs> did you get playing time? Yeah. When I, uh, when I, when I first got there, uh, the the college that I went to was a was like a low D one college, you know. So when I first started playing there, my uh, my teammates see my talent and they say you can play at a way better school than where you're playing at right now. So that's when I went to junior college first. Then after junior college, I went to uh, I was recruited by a whole bunch of top Division one colleges because I did pretty good in uh, in junior college. So when I was recruited there, then uh, Wichita State University, they it's a championship school. So, I mean, I w when I got got recruited there, I was like, man, I want to go get a championship too. So I went to a pretty good team, and I got enough playing time because everybody was so good, you know. And coming from Kenya, we we had to play catch up, like in, in terms of basketball wise, you know. So all all you gotta do is just go put uh, put in working on your game, keep working on your game, and make sure you up to par with everybody else so when I got there that's that was what I was doing basically so I got I got to play enough you know yes. because everybody was so good wow Taylor was this the same experience for you playing catch-up with the rest of the uh, uh yeah when I left here I mean basketball in America is way different from here so you have to first of all the physicality you know the guys over there are bigger uh, strong and faster so you have to be in the gym spend a lot of time so that you can catch up with them and uh, we pretty did a good job I think he did a good job too uh, to catch up with the game mm -hmm. yeah now of course um, your careers have taken a different turn now and mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that oh uh, when I finish uh, playing college uh, I got a I got an opportunity to play in Sweden for one year and uh, it was an amazing uh, uh, season over there because we went unbeaten uh, and won a championship over there. Then after that, because the season in Sweden ends faster than the season in uh, Italy, uh, there's a team called Avellino in Italy. It's a Serie A team. 
uh, they recruited me to go and play for them in the playoffs and that's where I finished. Um, let me get this straight. So are you play, uh, still playing in Sweden? No, I'm now in Italy. In Italy full yeah. time now? Yeah. Wow. What about uh, your career? How is it, uh, what direction has it taken? Uh, for me, uh, after, after I, I got done with, I just got done with college in May this year. So I just graduated in May. Then uh, after that, I got a, uh, I got a spo uh, sports agent and he was able to like uh, put me in uh in like a like a training camp where i get to like train with like nba guys and like uh people like anthony davis and them uh, uh glenn glenn davis we, they come in there deandre jordan so i i was able to get a get a good workout in uh the first part of my summer uh with some nba guys and uh, i talked to like uh the uh nba coach for the new orleans pelicans he came to see me work out one time and he was like you should just put on just a little bit more weight and you'll be able to uh, play in the NBA because you got, you got the talent, you got the work ethic. So he, he advised me to uh, take one year overseas to get bigger a little bit and uh, just keep working on my skills, not to stop working, you know. And next year I might get a chance to play in the NBA. So when he, he, gave, he, when he gave me that advice, so I talked to my agent, I was like, Instead of going to the D League right now, I was going to go to the D League. So I was like, instead of going to the D League, I'm gonna take this uh, uh, the coach's advice and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm try. If you can get me a contract overseas, uh, either in Europe or somewhere, then go play there one year, get better and like get bigger. Then I might get a chance to uh, step in the NBA next year. So I decided to take that route. So my my agent got me a uh, contract in Turkey. So that's where I'm. That's where my next move is. Wow. What are there? I'm sure there are, there are some bit of questions that are coming uh, through social media. Are there any? Actually, it's not a question. It's uh, a lot of love coming uh, the guy's way. Taylor Okari was a basketball hero back in high school. I ain't surprised he's living his dream. That guy online, Felix Wanyama boy. And uh, Miss Hazel, excited to watch Taylor and Bush, uh, hashtag Kenyan basketball, hashtag top sport. And uh, this is about uh, KPL. So we'll talk about KPL shortly. But my question to the two gentlemen is, one, he's talked about an agent. I just want to know, how is it uh, playing basketball out there what's the difference because uh, they played for the top schools that do basketball in the country so when they go out there what's the different thing that's not been done in the country that we can pick up from or they that they can share and then secondly he's talked about growing bigger they're i'm tall they're way taller than i am so how tall are they maybe just tell us how tall they are and how big they need to get so as to get a chance to play in the nba uh for me i'm uh, six six feet or uh, almost 1.98 meters and uh, I'm 94 kgs. Uh, to play in the NBA, I need um, uh, almost uh, probably eight more kgs. Yeah, because guys there are so muscular, so I need to get their level. Uh, uh, for me, I'm I'm seven feet even, and uh, I'm I'm about 230 pounds. I need to put on about about 20 more pounds. So about to get to about 250, 255. That's that's that would be a good playing weight for my position. I play power forward. So I, right now I, it's just working on your skills and transitioning your game to be a more a more complete player. So uh, he he has the question about what can Kenya basketball pick up from uh, outside. Uh, I feel like uh, Kenyan basketball. We 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 have we have talented people. But like we don't have really like the facilities and stuff, you know, to help people get really get better, you know. So I just feel like uh, if we had like a little bit more facilities and like more more drive towards the sports, because like the sport is now uh, evolving, you know, basketball. Every sport is evolving. Every sport, uh, athletics and uh, everything is evolving, you know. So. As the sport evolves, Kenya is kind of being left behind. We we look at countries like Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda is their league is way even way better than our league, you know. So, as the sport evolves, we should uh, the of our officials should like help the game evolve in Kenya too. It's it's like Kenya we being still being left behind in terms of basketball, mm -hmm. 
you know. Uh, what do you think Kenya can pick from, from you know, uh, outside there? Okay, funny thing is that uh, we have a lot of talent out here. Yesterday we played uh, Nairobi City versus uh, Mombasa City and both of us played for Nairobi. And it was a real good game at Nyayo. I mean, guys here can compete, uh, they can play. Uh, I think what they need to do is just the structures. Uh, they need to, like clubs, you need to have clubs which are like, it's like, it's your job to play basketball. You know, you spend a lot of time in the gym because I know people here, they have like, you have to go to, to, to work first, then you have to come and play basketball. But for us, we only sleep and think of basketball every time. So I think uh, we need the structures. Uh, we need our youth program to start developing and all that. All right, let's talk about the national team, guys. And um, I don't know if you guys have had the opportunity to play for the national team. Is it something you guys would love to be involved in? And are we there yet? Uh, for <laughs> me, I play... <laughs> I played for the national team in uh, 2011, yes. uh, before I left for the States. Mm -hmm. uh, I was probably like 18 years old and it was a senior national team. And I didn't play a lot, but uh, the experience I had, you know, playing with all the guys, uh, I learned a lot from them. But since then, basketball, uh, the national team basketball has gone down. You follow it? Have you been following out? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been following. If you compare us with other countries, probably like uh, Uganda, Rwanda, uh, they bring a lot of their international players mm -hmm. to play in the qualification maybe for the Afro basket. And for us, we don't do that, you know. So we need to bring guys who play abroad. I know there are a lot of Kenyans playing abroad. Then mix them with the Kenyan talent then have a strong team uh, so that we can be able to compete with the other team. Because you, all, you always need uh, that diversity, you know, people with different knowledge of basketball outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bush. Yeah, same thing, but like, uh, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to uh, play for the national team simply because uh, when I was in high school, I wasn't good enough, mm -hmm. you know. My, my, I'm, uh, I'm kind of like a uh, late bloomer, mm -hmm. you know. I was I wasn't good enough to play, but uh, they called me for the under 18 basketball. Uh, but at that time when they called me, that's when I was going to the states, you know, and and I, I was I was 17 then, you know. They called me, but that's when I was going to the states. But so I didn't get a chance to play for them. But um, now that I came back and I got better and I got I got way. Uh, better basketball experience now uh, they uh, they I talk to the coaches and stuff like that so hopefully the, in the future they will call us to come come back and play but as he said the the problem is with Ken the, uh, the Kenyan national team they don't they don't call players from abroad to come back and come back and play for the team it, that will make uh, the diversity in the team will make the team way stronger because you look at the team out the teams outside they they utilize all their players. They know they they got a player. Let's say for example in Europe, they got a player in America, in Canada. They bring it all back and they they tr they put them in a training camp. They train together. They so they know how each other they they pl each other play. You know, and they can they can make a stronger team from that. You know, in Kenya we don't we don't uh, we don't get the chance. We don't get no invitations. Every, like most of us are willing to come back and play for the national team because this. Kenya is the national pride. We we pride to be Kenyans. So if we're given the invitation, of course we're gonna leave whatever we're doing, and we're gonna come back and play for the national team. But if we don't get no invitation, then wherever we are, they're not gonna release us because they 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 not they not gonna know. You know, they they not just gonna let you just. I want to go back to Kenya. Where's the invitation? All right. Um, Silas, uh, challenge there to the Kenya Basketball Federation, of course. Uh, well, rather, you've covered basketball league for very many years, of course, and maybe you can just paint a picture uh, to the gentlemen here uh, and, of course, to the viewers of what kind of facilities the Kenyan basketball clubs have to endure every weekend. Uh, Watson, you and I both know about the Nyao Stadium, indoor gymnasium. When it rains, we can't play because it, it leaks a lot and Timekeeping is also an issue because our game is meant to start at uh, 2, it starts at 3, so uh, there's backlog. So the game for 6 p.m. ends up being played at around 8 and 
it's quite hard to cover basketball. It's quite hard to get guys to go out supporting basketball because uh, of all these uh, challenges. But the one thing that I love about basketball and the basketball fraternity in Kenya is that there is a core group of people who always go out every Saturday and Sunday. You'll find them at Nyayo or at Upper Hill and they will be supporting their teams. They'll support in Corp, KPA, Ulinzi. One of them is actually one of my colleagues, Mark Ndome, who will never miss a match if he's not working. So there is a lot of love for basketball in the country. I remember back in the day there was uh, the Sprite and uh, Dunkin' and there were, there were boards uh, on almost every estate in the city, but that kind of went down and it's a challenge to KBF, a challenge to the corporates to come back and support basketball in a big way. Uh, for me, the other question I have for them is they've gone to the States, they've gone to Europe. For someone who's playing in the KBF, how do they transition from Kenya uh, to go pro? Do they first go to Europe, maybe play in Turkey, Greece, and then get a chance to play uh, in the States? Or how do they go about it? Or they, do they go to Africa and maybe try out in Senegal uh, and other, uh, other countries like those? Uh, because they've had a chance to go and play in the States, in Europe. So how does a Kenyan professional, a Kenyan basketball player, because they're not pros in Kenya, Kenyan basketball player get a chance to go pro? Uh, I think uh, the best way is uh, probably for a young player, you know, to go to college first of all. Then when you go to college, you get used to their game first. You have to get used to their game because it's way different from the Kenyan game. So after that, you have that chance to develop and play in the professional. Either you can go to Europe or you can go to the NBA. Uh, Taylor, just to cut you short. You've uh. said that severally. You've said uh, the, the way we play basketball here is different from how it's played mm -hmm. abroad. Maybe just expound on that. What is it we're not doing right? Uh, first of all, uh, like... It's more of a system, in, uh, let's say, in America or Europe. Uh, in Kenya, we play more of up and down. We run up and down. But in uh, the outside countries, it's probably like the system. You know, the ball has to go to this guy. Maybe he's the best player, so he has to take more shots. Or you are a rebounder, you have to do your work. But here in Kenya, we probably, everybody's doing everything, you know. So, and we don't have a system, like, we kind of a little bit shallow. Yeah. Do you agree with what he's saying? Are we a bit yeah. shallow? It's, uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit different because, first of all, uh, it's specialization. Mm -hmm. What do you do best? Whatever you do best is what is going to give you money. If you rebound, if rebounding is what you do, they, they push you towards that, uh, that side. You know, they let you rebound all the time. You know? That's, that's going to be your specialty. If, you, if you're, you can really shoot the ball, they tell you, shoot the ball. Get in the gym and shoot the ball, you know? It's more of a specialization than uh, than a just w a everybody just going up and down. You know, that's that's basically the Kenyan basketball. It's like everybody goes up and go up and down and just pass the ball around. You know. But how can we change that? How can we change that? I uh, think uh, we have to start with the youth uh, program, yeah. especially in high school. Like even when I played in high school, uh, we used to run up and down every time. But when I went to the state, it was way different. I'll find myself running up and down and the other guys were behind me. So I, it took me time to get used to the game. So I think what we should do, like the coaches need to have a clinic. You know, when you teach a coach, now he can uh, teach like a lot of guys. So uh, first of all, we need to go to the youth program and teach them how to play in a system. All right, what are they? Uh, should you have a couple of more questions? Um, it's going to be the East Africa um, secondary school games uh, in a couple of weeks' time. First, we go to term two B games, then we go to the East Africa secondary school games. And I do hope the two guys could come down to Eldoret and just maybe share a bit of their skill set with the guys who are in uh, the school games. And maybe we'll get to see a change in Kenyan uh, basketball. Aside from that, the NBA, let's talk about the NBA. And the final was uh, quite something. Uh, LeBron... Steph Curry, just want to know who were you guys rooting for and how did you feel about how it turned out from 3-1 down all the way to the championships going the way of the Cavs? Man, it was a, it was a tough final. Uh, for me, I support LeBron James. I know he's a Steph Curry guy. No, but, <laughs> no, no. but like when, when they were down 3-1, like, oh my God, I was like, ah, it's, it's over. But uh, if you have the best player in the world, you know, he can take over any time, and that's what he did, and he won his uh, Syria championship. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think the best player on the Cavs really is Kyrie Irving. 
It's not LeBron. <laughs> so, first of all, that's, I, was, I just want to put nah, that nah, out nah, there. Nah. I just want to put that out there. Nah. Because he he way more aggressive than LeBron. He he had, if Kyrie didn't take over the game, then there would be no Cavs championship. But, but they, I, I rooted for them, though. But I, I wanted the Cavs to win. I didn't, I didn't want Golden State to win. But they had Kyrie before LeBron went there, and they never made the playoffs. So how, what do you mean by saying he's the best player? <laughs> Ky Kyrie the final, helped LeBron. In the, final, in the final, actually, Alvin did. You've seen the final, right? Yeah, he, he did, did, he did but game. LeBron right. averaged almost a triple-double, though. But with all his three shots, uh, almost at the end, it's the okay. game was tied. was tied, was tied at uh, 90 all at some point. Yeah. Then his three shots made a difference, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It did make a difference. But saying yeah. like uh, Kyrie is better than LeBron. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no. no I, didn't, I, didn't say, I didn't say Kyrie is better than LeBron. That. I just say Kyrie is the best player in the team. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. So it means LeBron. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. He, he's the best player on the team. I didn't. Mean, he, I didn't say LeBron okay, is the, the best player in best Game Seven. In Game Seven, that, that's right. If but you say LeBron seven. always needs somebody to save him. Kyrie saved him. You see, uh, the other year, Ray Allen saved him. You know, he always means needs somebody to save. But it's a team. It's a team player. So <laughs> you always need your teammates <laughs> to save you. You know, because you've saved them the whole time. So, yeah. all right. Thanks a lot, guys, for uh, showing up.